The Tesla Mega Pack is a grid scale energy storage product that is revolutionizing the way that we generate and consume electrical power. Each shipping container sized battery pack holds enough energy to power a small town of 4,000 homes for one hour. They cost over $2.5 million to buy, and thanks to a brand new state of the art mega factory in California, Tesla can build one of these mega pack units every 60 minutes. So let's talk about how they do that. The easiest way to think about a mega pack or grid scale energy storage is just like a giant bucket that holds energy. You can pour any kind of energy you want into that bucket. It can come from wind turbines, solar panels, geothermal, hydroelectric dams, nuclear reactors. It doesn't matter. And the reason that we do this is to help manage the economics of energy, the supply and the demand. The supply of energy is not always consistent, especially when we are talking about renewable, sustainable energy sources like wind and solar. We know that these are the energy sources that we need to leverage in order to bring down our carbon emissions. Unfortunately, both methods suffer from a very similar problem. The sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow. But if we introduce a bucket into the system, then we can stockpile some of that energy during times of peak generation. So when the time comes that generation is low, we can tap the bucket to maintain a consistent supply. The demand for energy is also not always consistent. So even if you have a steady supply from a source like a nuclear reactor or hydroelectric dam, there will be times when the demand for energy is lower than the supply, like in the middle of the night. And there can even be times when the demand for energy is greater than the supply, like a hot summer evening when everyone is cranking air conditioning and lights and appliances all at the same time. If you introduce a mega pack into a conventional power generation system like this, then during those times when the supply exceeds the demand, the excess energy is not wasted, it goes into the bucket. So that when the demand peak threatens to overwhelm the generated supply, they can just pour out the bucket to make up for the difference. Even in an ideal situation where the energy generation is never pushed beyond capacity, there will still be ebbs and flows in the supply and demand equation. When the demand is low and supply is high, then the price per watt of energy will be cheap. A mega pack allows you to buy up that energy and store it in your bucket, so that when the equation inverts and the demand is high, now the price per watt of energy will be more expensive, so you can take the cheap energy that you stored in your bucket and sell it for a higher price. Economics 101 in action. So, we have an incredibly useful product for a range of different applications, and one that is only going to become more useful and important as the world further transitions into sustainable energy. If we are going to make solar and wind a viable replacement for things like coal and natural gas, then grid scale energy storage is not an option, it is a necessity. Can't be done without big batteries and lots of them. So it sounds like Tesla has the perfect product in their lineup. They must be making an absolute killing off of these mega packs, right? Well, there's historically been a big problem with the mega pack. They are incredibly expensive and difficult to produce. When Tesla first introduced the Mega Pack, they were being manufactured in the company's Giga Nevada factory. This is a location where Tesla has teamed up with Panasonic to manufacture battery cells for the Model 3 and Model Y. So any time that the company had excess battery cells just kicking around the factory, they would toss them into energy storage products like the Mega Pack. But there are problems with that business model. For one, there are not very many occasions when excess batteries are just kicking around. The Model 3 and Model Y are two of the most popular electric vehicles in the world. In many cases, they even outsell gasoline-powered cars in the same vehicle class. So there needs to be an incredible amount of batteries just to meet that demand alone. And secondly, the battery cell that was designed for the Model 3 and was subsequently used in the Model Y is a very high-density, high-performance cell that uses nickel, cobalt, and manganese in its chemistry to give Tesla vehicles their famous long range, fast charging, and incredible acceleration. It's a very expensive battery full of exotic materials that are very difficult to source. Great for a sports car, entirely overkill for a bucket. 
Even with that limiting factor, Tesla was still able to install massive amounts of Megapack battery farms all over the world, from Australia to California to Hawaii to Europe and Texas. But Tesla was not able to grow their supply of Megapacks to meet the demand, and that demand is increasing exponentially year over year. Enter the Mega Factory, a dedicated location in Lathrop, California, that would be optimized to build Megapacks and only Megapacks. And with the inception of the Mega Factory came a new iteration of the product, what Tesla calls the Megapack 2XL. There are some major design changes here that not only make this a more compelling product for the consumer, but the redesign also makes it significantly cheaper and easier to manufacture the second version. Compared to the original design, the new Megapack is larger, obviously, hence the XL, now taking up nearly twice the footprint for a total dimension of 40 feet length, 8 feet high, and 7 feet wide. And the reason for the larger size is, of course, to accommodate more battery cells. This has raised the total energy storage capacity from 3 megawatt hours to 3.9 megawatt hours. But if the new Megapack is double the size, shouldn't it also be double the energy? No, and the reason being that Tesla has made a significant change in the battery chemistry. So, if we imagine the process of constructing a Megapack, we're going to start off with a metal box, essentially. Nothing complicated. You can think of it like a big shelving unit. Then those shelves are going to be filled up with racks and racks of battery modules. Again, Tesla is using the exact same battery module from the Model 3, but this is a different Model 3 from the first time around. When Tesla was first starting to manufacture the Model 3 standard range at their Shanghai Gigafactory, they introduced a new battery chemistry called LFP, or Lithium Iron Phosphate. So instead of that very rare and very expensive nickel cobalt manganese formula, they use just plain old abundant iron metal. Tesla was able to make this switch thanks to a supply from Chinese battery company CATL, who became their new neighbors in Shanghai. These LFP cells are much cheaper and easier to buy than any battery that Tesla had used previously. They did lack in some performance, obviously there is always a trade-off, so the iron-based cells have a lower energy density, meaning they don't really work for the long range or performance variants of Tesla vehicles, but they are perfectly fine for single motor standard range models. Eventually, that new battery system made its way over to America, with all standard range Model 3s coming out of Fremont, California, now receiving LFP battery packs. So, when the Mega Factory opened in nearby Lathrop, the two factories were able to share the imported battery supply. And this is how Tesla creates efficiency. The exact same battery cell and module that goes into their base Model 3 also goes into the Mega Pack. They are interchangeable, and they can be managed according to supply and demand, whether they go into cars or into storage. So, the next thing that we need to install in our Mega Pack box is a thermal management system. Lithium ion batteries are very temperamental. They like a very specific temperature range. Not too hot, not too cold. So you need both cooling and heating systems to regulate the cells and keep them at optimal performance. This is true in both the Model 3 and the Mega Pack. So again, Tesla just uses the same thermal management system for both, because why not? This only further maximizes their efficiency. And since Tesla sells the Model 3 in every market from Australia to Alaska, they have a really good sense for how this thermal system performs in all weather and climate conditions. This gives them confidence that they can operate the Megapack in any location. The last major component that a Megapack is going to require is the AC-DC inverter. So the electricity going in and out of the battery is always DC or direct current. The electricity going in and out of the power grid is always AC or alternating current. You can't mix the two, so one has to be converted to the other in order to integrate battery energy and grid energy. You do this every day when you charge your cell phone. That plastic brick between the USB cable and the wall plug is an AC-DC converter, AC out of the wall, DC into your phone. So the Megapack just needs a really big inverter, like really big. And yet again, this is an area that Tesla has a lot of experience with. Every Tesla vehicle has an onboard power inverter, 
which it needs to use anytime you plug into a home outlet or a level 2 charging station because those both draw AC power and send it into the vehicle. That needs to be converted to DC before it can enter the battery pack. At a level 3 charger, like the Tesla Supercharger, the inverter is built into the charging station and it sends DC power directly to the car, bypasses the internal inverter, and charges the battery at a much higher power level. The Supercharger has a much bigger inverter that can handle more flow than the little one built into the car. So, Tesla has experience building small inverters, big inverters, and with the Mega Pack, they just scaled that up to really big. So because Tesla isn't really doing anything new with the Mega Pack, and they're mostly using parts that were already being manufactured for their highest volume electric cars, they can now build a lot of Mega Packs in a fairly short amount of time. According to a recent video released by the company, the Mega Factory can hit a run rate of one Mega Pack every 68 minutes, or up to 10,000 units per year. Yes, I fibbed a little bit in the title. It's actually 68 minutes, not 60, but we've got to play the YouTube game, so I, I rounded down, okay? I apologize. And the biggest advantage here is that the economy of the Mega Pack only continues to get sweeter. So the cost to manufacture them has come down thanks to the cheaper and more abundant battery chemistry. The speed of manufacturing has increased thanks to the factory. While the price per unit that Tesla is able to charge has been steadily increasing, netting them a higher and higher profit margin. Looking quickly at Tesla's earnings report, they never itemize the Mega Pack specifically, they just group all Tesla energy into one line. So that includes solar panels and everything. But we can see that the profit margin associated with Tesla energy rose from around 9% to 12% just from quarter three to quarter four of 2022. So the profitability of the Mega Pack is growing, and that's because the demand for the product is also growing. And even though Tesla is increasing their supply faster than ever, it's still not going to meet the demand. So going back to Economics 101, if the demand exceeds the supply, then the price will go up, and so too will the profit. It's a pretty sweet deal for Tesla, and when people try and explain that you need to look at this company beyond just the cars, this is the kind of thing that they are talking about. The potential upside for Megapack and sustainable energy is far beyond consumer electric cars. You've just got to follow the money. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.